Miss Lucy T, in case you do not know. I'd like to welcome you to another BEBB event. Good. You guys are really good. It's such an honor to have each and every one of you guys in the room. Let me tell you guys now, today is going to be amazing. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to hear a lot. You're going to be filled with so much knowledge that is, of course, going to empower you. And that's exactly what we're here for. BEBB stands for Be Educated, Be Bold. We had our launch in August. Our main aim with BEBB is to empower people through education. The reason why we are here today, today's focus is all about networking. It is one of the most powerful tools that you will ever have. Guaranteed fact. The people that you connect with, the people that you meet, the relationships you cultivate are super important for any area. So we're going to go straight over to our speakers now. Now I'm going to introduce one by one. So we have first and foremost, radio personality. Beautiful, wonderful woman herself. She's an absolute boss. That's all I can say. She's also an event host. She kills it on the stage. She loves doing stuff like this as well. If you think I talk a lot, oh, believe me, trust me. And she's good at it. She's good at it too. And um, she is also a presenter as well. If you could put your hands together for the one and only Monica Lee. We also have a guy who I would say is super inspirational. You inspire me so very much, honestly, so very much. He is a labor counselor for Stoke Newington, and he's also the CEO of a youth-led non-part... Partisan. Partisan, that's the word, mm -hmm. that's the word, yeah, partisan. Essentially, the organization that he runs is not split by political parties, so it's, it brings everyone together in one room and in one space, which is a great thing to do. Um, movement on a mission to secure a better Brexit for young people, and the name of that organization is My Life, My Say, and it is the CEO, Mette Coburn. We have another bad ass boss woman. This woman right here, okay, adore her as well. She is an events and entertainment project manager. She's also a motivational speaker, so another talker as well. We, we just trust you. There's a lot of talkers right up here, a lot of talkers. Motivational speaker and also an entrepreneur as well. She is the founder and co-CEO of an incredible organization, bringing out the best in creative young women, a network for extraordinary people, um, power in, poten in potential, sorry, program, mentorship and training called She's King Empire, it is Maya. <laughs> Last but not least, we have another, just, oh, just too many bosses up on here, just incredible women doing incredible things. She is a content writer, she's also a personal development writer as well, and she is one of the best speakers I have ever seen, and this is not just me saying it, but literally I've seen her speak, that's where we connected, She's absolutely amazing. Please put your hands together for Kelly Wagner. The definition of networking is the exchange of information or services among individuals, groups, or institutions, specifically the cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. Whereas you, you might be that individual that's a little bit more quiet, a little bit more reserved, but you actually were able to have a conversation and a conversation that that other person will remember and value. So that was really, really interesting. Um, and also about understanding who you are when you step into those spaces. Uh, just to introduce myself, so my name is Mete, I'm from Hackney, Stoke Newington, so thank you for coming to Hackney to do this. One of the reasons why this event is so important about sort of networking, I often talk with my friend, Lenny said, we, we always often talk about sort of uh, the barriers that people face from coming from a sort of uh, more disadvantaged and deprived background. And I, myself, for example, I couldn't go to secondary school in Hackney because at the time all the schools were shutting down. And one of the observations that I have among my friends when we talk about sort of just their normal day to day jobs or whatever it is, is we lack that generally, it's sort of like among my friends, among my circle, we lack that confidence when it comes to sort of making sure that, you know, for example, taking risks. Because, you know, if you're someone from a more privileged background who comes from a more wealthy back a family or someone who's got those connections from the first place, then you're more likely to see failure not as a, a negative, but more as a positive, and you're more likely to take that risk. Whereas with us, because from a young age, we've been told you'll be lucky to finish university without even realizing by the time you get to your 20s or your 30s, automatically you seek security and stability. So you wouldn't want to take that risk. And that's why this is so important is because when we're in those spaces it's about how do we make sure that we get the most out of those situations. Essentially, if you don't ask, you don't get. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. 
and too often, you know, people like us, we're too worried to ask for things, and you'd be surprised people who come from much more privileged backgrounds, they literally are not scared to ask for what they want. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you always think, oh, but what if that person reacts bad? So what? Mm -hmm. If they do, if you lost anything, not really. All you're going to get is someone who's going to give you a look, look and you're going to move on. My father once, I remember getting in primary school, it was a half term, and um, he took me to, uh, he basically said to me, it was a Friday and he was getting paid and he used to get paid cash in hand. And he said to me, um, why don't you come? He goes, and I'll buy you something and when I get paid and you get, get paid cash in hand. Cut a long story short, it got to the point where he was literally waiting in the queue, like bless him, to get paid. And he was meant to get paid for pound. And the guy just turned around and said to him, I'm giving you 150 because I don't like your work. And that's the sort of thing from a young age, although it was very sort of hard to take, it sort of taught me, it gives me privilege in the sense that actually knowing that I don't want to ever go back to that. And not just I don't want to ever go back to that, but it gave me the fire and the determination which led me to go into politics because I thought I never want to see any father look at their child like that. Hello everyone, I'm Monica Lee. Nissi summed me up amazing, thank you very much. For me, networking, especially with the pers um, being a host and a personality, is that it's connecting with people outside of your social circle. Um, I feel like it's so important to just take that leap and talk to people about what you want and tell them how you want it, going back to networking, that you're able to just step out, talk to people that you don't know and have a goal in mind. Why are you networking? There's no point going out there to network if you don't have an idea, you don't have a proposal. Because no one wants to hear someone saying, oh, I want to do something. What are you doing? Know what you want. Step out of your comfort zone. It's okay to go by yourself. You don't need your regions all the time. You can go by yourself. Because at the end of the day, you've got to take care of you before you can take care of everyone else. My name's Maya. Um, and just to kind of add to what our amazing <coughs> guests have said, I think confidence is the issue. Confidence is probably the reason why we don't like to network as much because you're so worried about how you come across to people when realistically they're in the same exact position as you are. And with what we teach at She's King with um, the women that we work with is just being able to be yourself, I think it's very, very okay. When I meet people, my number one thing is to get to know you. Who are you and what do you do? Because just like you, I'm a human being too and I have hopes and dreams and I have uh, fears and I have, you know, we all kind of have similar things that we, we go through. So because we place ambitious on, ambition on this pedestal that's kind of like being amazing, being fantastic and being outstanding all the time, you then think you fall short of that when really all you have to do is be yourself. I found out so much just about talking to the people I met today and I'm like, oh my god, I need this, I need this and oh my god, I know this person and you can, it's literally just about give and take mm -hmm. and you do it every day in your lives and you're going to the shop when you're with your family and with your friends. So don't dehumanize the concept of networking. And the only way to best network is to volunteer for stuff. Don't always chase the money. In fact, forget the money. I know you have to pay your bills and stuff, you don't live in the streets, I hear you, but you need to learn how to just volunteer yeah. and put your hand up and do it. And I meet so many girls that were, that, that remind me of myself and they come to me like, how much am I getting paid? And I'm like, getting what? Get paid. I walked to places and I didn't ask for no payment and those were the moments where I ended up meeting so many people that saw my work and my drive and that's why I like to sell more. And we all on social media now, it's all about looking like you're doing stuff. People are going to actually want to know what you actually do and they're going to best see it when you're doing it. Hi guys, I'm Kelly Webrow. Um, so as Lisa said, I'm a content writer. For me, like networking, I feel like it's really kind of like people feel like it's reserved for uh, business. Um, and entrepreneurs, but essentially networking is just the ability to kind of really collaborate and build relationships, which you need to do in kind of any area of your life. And I feel like with my blog, it's kind of really helping people to understand like who you are as a person, so how your personality links in with someone else, and it's really kind of finding a space where you can add value. I mean, touching on what Maya said in terms of we go to networking events thinking, oh, what, like, can I find a photographer, can I find a videographer, rather than thinking, like, where can I add value and is this the right space for me? And I'm, like, is me going to that event, is it something that's just kind of like, is profile raising or can I actually have some form of impact on this particular event? A lot of the time we go in and we've got our elevator pitch and stuff, and I'm not really interested kind of in what you do, I'm more interested in what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, because straight away if I say what I do, I'm going to say that I'm a writer for Compare the Market and it really sounds really dry. Um, <laughs> but like what I feel like my purpose is, is to help people be connect, better connected with themselves. So 
it's kind of like leading them with the right questions to kind of say like, what actually is your purpose? Like, what, it is, what, what is it that you're trying to do? Then we can go on to what platform you're using. Say that again, please, please. Speak even if your voice is shaky. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's such a powerful message. I just want to know like, what are the right steps to take towards getting involved with more events? Because that's the thing that I'm interested in. Now you have social media and it's like, there are events everywhere. Mm. Inbox, hi, can I help? Mm. Hey, can I volunteer? Literally, I'm doing an event right now and I need volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, it's just about being able to look around. Especially with events, don't get me wrong, we always need people. How should you go about networking with someone who's quite a lot older than you? Especially if you see them as perhaps a potential mentor. A lot of mistakes that kind of people make is they approach people and say, can you mentor me? Mm. And a lot of these people, like in a nutshell, don't really have the time, but what you need to kind of do is build an organic relationship where they actually realize kind of the value that you input from kind of your youthfulness and the ideas that kind of you can come up with. And I think people have to be very careful in how they kind of approach people and how they build relationships because there is a way in which to do it. Sometimes a lot of people do not go out and network or go and put themselves out because they are afraid, they are scared, or they are too shy, or they feel like I have nothing to offer the other person. So that's the first thing that we are actually going to tackle. Sometimes you do have to fake it till you make it with things like this. So I am great. I am great. I am mighty. I am mighty. I am amazing. I am Right, that's exactly what you need to believe. If you're telling yourself that every single day, I'm telling you right now, at first you might not believe it, but after a while you will start to believe it. You will start to walk with your chest up and with your head held up high because you realize all of these things are you. So one thing that I want us to do right now is we're gonna let go of the baggage. We're gonna let it go from today. What I want you guys to do is you're gonna rip up that piece of paper and I'm gonna walk, I want you guys to scream at the top of your lungs. Literally, I wanna Hi, my name's Amy. Um, one thing I mentioned is I don't like the way I doubt myself. Okay. The way that you doubt yourself. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And I heard some, I saw some notes. So people can relate, right? People can relate to that. Okay, thank you so much. And can you share with us, sorry, one more thing. One thing that you do like about yourself. Yeah, oh. Or one positive thing about um, yourself. I can sing really well. Yeah. You can sing very well. <laughs> wait, wait, you know when you say things like that? Yeah. Awesome. So going forward, what would you say is the biggest advice you would give to somebody who maybe didn't attend this event? What can they do in their networking in the future? I said, don't be fearful. Like literally, come. Don't think about anything. Literally, just come with your your, your mind wide open because you literally don't know what you'd get out from this. Like loads of people came by themselves yes. and met so many people, got exchanged so many contacts. Yeah. Just, just don't be afraid. Who was your favorite speaker? Um, well, I, I, I'd have to say Nissi because it's Nissi's event. Yeah. But if it's out of the four, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I could if I, if I could say a favorite. I think they all brought something different. Yeah. And but each each person brought something that was equally valuable. Valuable. Mm, totally agree. With me, it sort of motivated me to speak out more in public because me going there and actually speaking in front of everyone else, it was kind of nerve wracking. But I thought because obviously I want to like go into doing like inspirational speaking and motivational speaking, so I thought it's a step stone. Even if it's, I didn't say nothing, I still stood there and I was like, yeah, at least I can do it, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Like even for me, um, I do speak on YouTube, but getting out there and actually speaking in front of people is a whole different ball game. Um, so yeah, so I'm glad you've been empowered in that regard. Okay, so we're here with a wonderful band. Hello, 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 hello. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good. I'm proud of Nisi. I'm proud of my lady. You know what it is? It's uh, bringing more knowledge to the table. Yep. Um, 
and just growing a platform yeah. um, and doing it in a way that encourages people yeah. and it's not a, it's, it's not a, it's not a lecture mm. it's a, it's an interactive session